now that we've made some molecules, now it's, we can start talking about what are called polar and nonpolar covalent bonds, and this is a very important topic, so I'm glad you're here. So a polar bond is a co. So first of all, they're covalent bonds, but a polar bond is a covalent bond in which the two bonded atoms share. Let's see. Hold on. Let me see. Covalent bond in which the atoms share the shared electrons, in which the shared electrons are not shared equally, in which shared electrons are not shared equally. Sorry that took so long for me to say. And colon, the more electronegative elements pulls the electrons or has a larger share of the electrons. So the more electronegative element and capital E, capital N means electronegative or electronegativity. The more electronegative element has a larger share of the electrons. And is partially negative. And my example here is HF. HF, it turns out, is the most polar covalent bond. If I were to draw its Lewis structure, and everything comes down to Lewis structures now, right? you have to be able to draw the Lewis structure for the next couple chapters at least, and maybe all of them. But here's the Lewis structure, and if we look at our periodic table, here's fluorine and electronegativity decreases and decreases. Hydrogen's up here, but it turns out that hydrogen is the least electronegative nonmetal. Least electronegative nonmetal. So it will always be less electronegative than other nonmetals. And since only nonmetals form covalent bonds, this one will always be less or least electronegative. And so this one is always positive. Or I should say always partially positive. Fluorine, on the other hand, is always partially negative because fluorine is the most electronegative nonmetal. The uh, noble gases don't have electronegativity scores because they don't bond. Electronegativity refers to bonding atoms. And so here's what I want to do. What I am about to do is I am about to, in, in dark green or black, is draw a dipole. And I'll tell you what the dipole is first. A dipole is a permanent uh, charge separation in a molecule. A permanent charge separation in a molecule. And so when I draw a dipole, like I've talked about, so Fluorine is going to be partially negative, and to do that, I'm going to draw what amounts to a lowercase Greek letter delta. That's like a squiggly D there. And delta means, lowercase delta means partial, partial negative, partial positive for the hydrogen, and that is a dipole. And that's not typically how I draw dipoles especially if there's more than one dipole in a molecule. This one isn't so bad. The way I really draw dipoles is with what's called a dipole arrow. And a dipole arrow looks like this, where this is the plus part, and this is the negative part. 
and the arrow pointing towards where the electrons are going or where the electrons are spending most of their time. So I could also draw it down here. And one other thing about dipoles is that we only draw dipoles for bonds. We only draw dipoles for bonds in which the two atoms have different electronegativities. Which the two atoms have different EN. And if you're playing along at home for electronegativity, remember, as you go to the left and as you go down, 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 electronegativity gets smaller or it decreases. And as so as you go from fluorine to oxygen, it decreases. Oxygen to sulfur, it decreases. Now, oxygen and chlorine, they're uh, diagonal from each other, so it might be hard to tell. However, on your conversion and equation sheets, if you go to the third page, you should find an electronegativity score sheet, and that will tell you that even though oxygen and chlorine are diagonal from each other, oxygen is the second most electronegative element. In fact, I think I've got all, yes, I think I've got all of the non-metals that you'll need for the entire course in this little table right here. And that'll help, I should have said this earlier, I guess, huh? That'll help with your, which is the central atom in your Lewis structures as well. All right, so typically I draw with a dipole arrow. That means that this hydrogen is plus, that's a plus, and the electrons are spending more time with the fluorine. That's why the arrow is pointing towards the fluorine. And only for bonds. Now, a nonpolar bond is a, bond, is a covalent bond in which the electrons are shared equally. And typically the way that that happens is that the two atoms are the same. If we were to draw the Lewis structure for fluorine, well, first we'd have to put all of our electrons in. We can see that both fluorines have octets because the octet rule rules. And if we were to look up the electronegativity, well, uh, we can look it up. It's four for fluorine perfect four, that's the highest it goes, and no difference in electronegativity, no dipole. And we'll come back to dipoles in a little bit, but what I want to leave you with at the end of this lecture outline, and yes, we're pretty much done, is that bonding is a continuum. And on one end of that, are nonpolar bonds, nonpolar, that's an N, polar covalent bonds. And on the other end are ionic bonds. And what I mean by this is that nonpolar covalent bonds have equally shared electrons. In the bond. And then as soon as there's a difference in electronegativity, you're going to get polar covalent bonds. And there's a range of polar covalent bonds. They become more polar as the difference in electronegativity increases. And I'm using delta there for difference. Delta EN is difference in electronegativity increases. And then at some point, they just become ionic bonds. And ionic bonds, remember, 
no sharing of electrons. The one atom is giving electron or electrons to another atom, and that electron then has a full on negative one, negative two, etc. charge. Um, and, but there's only really two types of bonds, ionic and covalent. And then within covalent, there's two types, polar and nonpolar. And, uh, but that still gives us some range, um, meaning that there's different types of polar covalent. And there's actually, not that we discussed it in this class, different types of ionic bonds too.